Well, I got my job in 1973. Um, I had been in Terre Haute for two and a half years, and uh, prior to coming here, I actually went back to my first sportscasting job in Ottawa, Illinois, because they cut out the sports programming at the radio station I was working at in Terre Haute. And whatever the case, I got the job, and, and the next thing you know, uh, um, uh, I've been here 40 years. So it, it, it's been a long time, and it's been a lot of fun. Well, they won their first national title with me on board three years after I got here. Um, and, I, you know, the year before I came, they were in the Final Four. That was Coach Knight's second, uh, second season. Uh, I came in his third year. Uh, we went to the CCA tournament uh, the first time that he, uh, I was a part of the, of the broadcast in that first year. And they came back, sure enough, they went unbeaten and did it. So to be a part of that uh, was really special for me. Uh, three years into it, and I'm still, I think, 29 years old at the time when they won that first title. So uh, it was a special, special time. It, it's still emotional when I listen to the broadcast. I still uh, well up a little bit every now and then thinking uh, how lucky I was to be a part of that. And then they come back and win it in 81, which is a five-year period. Uh, and then they win it in 87, which is a six-year period. So uh, they had three national championships uh, in my first 14, 15 years of being a part of the program. Um, it, it just made you aware of how great this program and the tradition, how strong it was here at that time. Um, and of course, we went through a down spell since then as far as national championships, but we've had great teams here, a lot of great teams, despite those non-winning years, so to speak, of national titles. Trust me, uh, in, if you're a play-by-play -play guy in the radio business, uh, you're, to me at least, uh, it's a thrill to be a part of doing radio play-by-play. -play. I, I love doing games. That's, that's what I got in this business to do. So uh, yeah, there weren't national championships in a lot of those years, uh, but at the same time, it didn't detract from the fact I was still doing what I love to do, play-by-play. <laughs> Well, of course, when, when Tom came on board, uh, it was ground zero, uh, as everybody knows. Uh, he had to get rid of several players because of academics, uh, for other reasons. Uh, he had guys that transferred out uh, because they didn't want to play for him or be a part of such a down scenario for this program. Uh, so he started with two walk-ons and, and a couple of kids that had uh, signed national letters but could have gotten out of them but decided not to. Um, so you're talking about Matt Roth and Tom Pritchard. Uh, that, that said something about him. It also said something about how the way he wanted to build this program and, and the way he went about building this program. Uh, he did it the right way, number one. He, he brought in good kids, kids that were just as involved in uh, academics as they were in athletics. Um, he, he brought in the best guys he could find at that time, which you know may not been to the normal standards of, of basketball talent that we'd had here. But you know he got a late start. He also, everybody else knew that it was going to be a while before Indiana got back. So he got what he could get, and then he molded those guys and basically laid a foundation with those players uh, that it took you know three troublesome years to get back to a really good year. Uh, yeah, I, I, I just think Tom Crean did a remarkable job of staying the course, never deviating from uh, what the expectations culture-wise at this university are or were, 
and, uh, and did a tremendous job of laying the foundation first. And then finally, as his recruiting took over and started to add uh, good players to the program, and I say good players in the sense of the kind of players that Indiana was used to getting, then all of a sudden things started to take off as they did a year ago. It's going to be interesting to see how these kids handle a new pressure, a whole different kind of pressure, uh, all kinds of expectations that have not been on this team at any point in time since any of these kids came here. Now they're dealing with these, even the new kids, because, well, this is what they came here for, and that's what all these kids came here for, but they've never had to deal with it. So it's a whole different ball game in that sense. The good news is that Tom Crean's done a tremendous job of getting these guys to understand of what the expectations are from him and, and his coaching staff on a day-by-day -day basis ever since they walked on campus. And so his expectations, the bar is set really high. And so there are the expectations that they're now dealing with from an outside standpoint, as long as they can keep that outside stuff away, uh, will not be a factor for them, or not near the factor that it would be for a lot of teams. I, I, I think the other thing that Tom has done is embraced all this hyperbole and, and, uh, and superstar status type scenario that Indiana University now has again, and he hasn't just tried to shove it aside and say it's not important and all that kind of stuff. This is what these guys came here to be a part of, and he's made sure they understand that, and that in itself tells you a little bit about the culture that he has brought on board since he took over because I think that's a great way to approach it. Hey, if you come to Indiana University, you're coming to play against great competition. You're coming to play against great teams that you will be expected to beat. And you're coming into a place, the Assembly Hall, which has one of the great reputations in the country as far as a tough place to play. And it's your responsibility to make sure it stays that way. Uh, so he set, a, he set a stage for these guys all to understand how difficult it is going to be to play here. And he's brought in enough really good players now where the competition level is unbelievably high. And so these guys just to play, just to get a chance to get it on the floor, have to bring it every day in practice. So he's, he gets it 100% in that regard. And so uh, I look at this season as one that's going to be very successful because I think these kids are talented enough to make it that way. But I think they also understand what is expected of them uh, from their coaching staff and the head coach and, and basically from a fan base and from a school's tradition standpoint. All these things come into play in their thinking process. I just think it's a great way to handle it, and um, I can't wait to see how they do. I, I'm not going to predict how they're going to do, but I think it's going to be pretty well. Well, you know, it's interesting. People ask me all the time what my favorite memory is. I've got so many of them that it's too many to count. Um, you know, you go to 75, and, and there were so many good games that season, but the game that sticks out in everybody's mind is the fact that they got beat by Kentucky. And, right. and a kid named Bob Guyette was the center for the Kentucky Wildcats. And where did he come from? Ottawa, Illinois. Where did I come from? Ottawa, Illinois. He was a player at Ottawa Marquette High School, and I broadcast some of his games when he was in high school. So, um, <laughs> I mean, there are a lot of things that you think about, you know, that make memories for you, and that, of course, is one from that season. The 76 season, uh, the three games with Michigan, uh, beating in them all three times. Uh, one time almost getting beat uh, here in the Assembly Hall by Michigan, and there was a tip in by Kent Benson in that game, and also a tip in by Kent Benson in the Kentucky game that year in Lexington that preserved both of those uh, wins and continued that winning season possibility or a, a a uh, season in which Indiana did not lose in, and winning those two ball games was as big for that year's unbeaten status as any two games you could play. Well, no, I really, I mean, I really don't uh, pick out one game. I never have. I've never done that. It's just not in my thinking process. I just look forward to the next game, whatever it may be. Sure, you, you like to talk about the games that are going to be big games, and everybody knows the North Carolina game is going to be one. Uh, the games that they're going to play in New York against Georgia, and then either UCLA or Georgetown, that'll be big. Uh, Butler is going to be a big ball game this year, and of course, all the Big Ten games. I mean, 
these games are all important, so you can't really put much emphasis on one over another. And the other thing that happens is, as you go along, you find out there's somebody that comes along that nobody expects is gonna be pretty good, and that team has got a chance to knock you off, or you've got a chance to, to knock them off, so to speak. So all these things come into play. That's why I don't pick out one game over any other. Uh, but I do look forward to all the games that everybody else looks at, just that it's gonna be very competitive just because those games are what everybody expects to be good. Uh, but last year's game with Kentucky here in Assembly Hall, I mean, that's a very good example of it. A lot of people thought, well, Indiana's not going to be great this year. They're probably still going to get drilled by Kentucky when they play them. But that didn't happen. And it didn't happen because this team was on the course that Tom Crean had set it on. Nobody thought it would get here quite that quick, but it did. And that's what's fun about this thing. You bet. Thank you. Thanks for having me. You bet.